If I had to choose one running theme to apply to the past few months in terms of the gaming industry, it certainly wouldn't be an influx of new content. Not that I've really noticed all that much. I have a near infinite backlog to work with, and I've never really been one to ride on the cutting edge of gaming anyway, when there are much better deals to be had on games released a few years or a few decades back. Of course, I couldn't help but take notice when the universe decided that Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 3, the Sword and Shield Isle of Armor expansion, and Minecraft Update 1.16 all needed to be released within a week of each other. Not even a week, six days. I'm sure if you know me in real life at this point, you'll be aware that in the past week and a half, I've already put in over 30 hours into Fortnite, over 25 hours into Minecraft, and I haven't even gotten a chance to visit the Isle of Armor yet, so I've been pretty busy. Unfortunately, that means I haven't really had much time to play games for the channel. Sure, all of this new content put into the work some awesome videos, but that's still a while down the line. Luckily, I had a pretty solid set of videos already lined up, and I keep my videos on a bit of a playtime buffer as is, so I was able to keep up for a while, but pretty soon I was looking for a game I could get done in time for this week. Enter Grimm's Hollow, a short freeware RPG suggested by commenter Mygen, who, by the way, happens to hold the world record speedrun in not only every Faerun game, but every category of every Faerun game, not including blindfolded any percent in Faerun Origin. This man has an iron fisted monopoly on the Faerun speedrunning market, which I think is almost as hilarious as it is incredibly impressive. So, when this absolute speed demon of a man, who I'll be sure to link down in the description, commented on one of my videos and suggested I check out this game, I mean, I kind of had to? I'm not really much of an RPG guy. Sure, I have been known to dabble in a Pokemon game or two, or three, or twenty. But outside of that franchise, I've never actually completed an RPG. That's why I'm hoping Grimm's Hollow will help me at least dip my toes into the genre. So, without any further ado, let's take a look. In Grimm's Hollow, you're placed in the shoes of protagonist Lavender, a girl who hates the color purple and who has recently found herself... dead. In this world, when you die, you're sent to the Hollow until you're able to move on to the proper afterlife. If your spirit is too strong to move on, you'll be sent to the Hollow as a ghost, and if your spirit is too weak to move on, you'll be sent as a Reaper. Lavender is a reaper, and as a reaper, it's her job to reap ghosts and send them on to the afterlife so she can make her spirit more complete and move on herself. But that isn't her primary objective. You see, Lavender has lost her brother Timmy, and it's your job to help her find him and eventually reunite him with his soul so he can go back home. In order to do this, you'll have to travel the world of the Hollow, which is infested with ghosts free to reap. The world of this game looks really nice, but in a low-key kind of way. I often found myself stopping to admire just how competently the characters are designed. Of course, you all know I am an absolute sucker for pixel graphics, and these are done really well. The overworld uses an art style reminiscent of older 8-bit RPGs on, say, the NES, while character art and battles use higher quality, more animated sprites. The actual characters themselves are so cute, look at these guys, and combine all this with a soundtrack worthy of being added to a playlist and you have a game that's an absolute joy to the eyes and ears. I'm also a big fan of the combat system. Admittedly, I can't really say that it grabbed me from the first battle, it starts out pretty basic. You only have one attack which uses, I, I guess you could call this like a quick time event to determine its effectiveness. Fortunately, you're soon introduced to the upgrade system, probably the most important aspect of the game. When you successfully reap a ghost, you gain SP, which you can use to buy healing items from the bakery or to upgrade your character by either increasing one of her five stats or learning a new special move. The upgrades to your character's stats scale pretty nicely. A good upgrade system can be one of the most satisfying features of any game, and it definitely is here. The multi-battle format allows you to see yourself improve against old enemies while introducing new ones at the same time, which is awesome. Unfortunately though, the special moves seem like a bit of wasted potential. There are an absolute ton of them, some of which have multiple upgrades, and yet they aren't ever really necessary. You shouldn't need them against common enemies if you do a decent job upgrading your stats, and I only used two of the 14 available in the final boss, which, to be honest, I didn't really need there either. This isn't a very hard game, I only died a few times near the beginning, and this game takes the old, the only consequence of dying is having to walk back to where you were approach to death, so even then it was no big deal. 
I did have a bit of difficulty with the quick time events for dodging attacks sometimes not working quite right, as well as a weird issue with inputs for these events moving me in the battle menu at the same time, but really it barely affected the actual gameplay. Carry lots of goods from the bakery and you'll probably be fine. One of the big draws of this game is its story. I won't spoil any specifics, but I think the story is done really well. For such a short runtime, they managed to pack in an impressive amount of world building and character backstory without making you sit through massive exposition dumps or walls of text. All of the characters are relatable and sympathetic. It's pretty rare for a game to get me invested in the story to the point where I'm rooting for the characters and actually care about what happens next. The story has four different endings for you to unlock, a bad ending, two medium endings, and a good ending. Which one you unlock is determined by whether or not you win the final battle and whether or not your spirit is complete at the end of the game. If you don't get the ending you want but you forgot to save before going into the final battle, they're even so generous as to offer you a retry button after you beat the game, setting you back to right before the final room. Very time conscious of them. Just a fair warning though, all the endings are still varying amounts of sad. This game is sad. It's a sad game. After you've gotten all of the endings, well, that's it. There isn't really anything else for you to do. Short, sweet, two to four hour adventure. So, do I recommend you play Grimm's Hollow? Absolutely. It's a free game that can be beaten in only a couple of hours and can be easily run on even the crustiest of family computers or decade old laptops. The barrier of entry is pretty much non-existent, and for that, it's a fantastic experience. If you don't currently find yourself too busy with Fortnite or Minecraft or Pokemon, go play Grimm's Hollow. And if you are, keep it in mind the next time you're bored one afternoon. It's a few hours well spent. This is an important video because it officially marks the last time I'll ever have to mention the 500 subscriber mark in my outros. It didn't occur to me until just now that I have no idea what I'm going to use to fill this time until we're close to the next big milestone. In all seriousness though, thank you all so much for the support up to this point. I do have something planned for 500 subscribers, although it might still be a ways away at this point, but be sure to keep an eye out for that. Of course, as always, if you like this video, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment telling me what you think, and hey, just because we hit 500 subscribers doesn't mean you can't still subscribe to support the channel. You can find all of my social media, including my Discord server, as well as Mygen's Twitch and YouTube channels, all linked down below. And with that, that's about all I've got for you. Thanks for watching.